after realizing that Fields had a 50% completion percentage, uh, seeing a textbook collapse from the coaching staff in the fourth quarter again, like I'm ready to move on from from what they have under I'm center. I'm ready to move on from life. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to episode 105 of the Shy Sports Weekly Podcast. Kyle, Ty, how are we doing, boys? I'm heartbroken. heartbroken. I feel like I've just gone through a, uh, an absolute grinder. I, I don't know how we're going right into Bears. I'm not even letting you introduce Ty. This is... He needs no further game. introduction. This is an... Well, he, we'll get to the Steelers, I guess. They stink too. Poo-poo. How, how can you know the outcome of a game before the game even starts? There was no way the Bears were going to win that game. I yeah. had, like, in the, my heart of hearts, I knew for a fact they weren't going to win that game. That was right. It was destined. They were destined to lose that game in the most heartbreaking fashion. It was 17-7 to 7 in the fourth quarter, and I, and I did not even think that they were going to win the game. Yeah, I was when just it became, thinking to myself, how are they going to fucking blow this? When it they became don't convert seven. on the fourth and one because Darnell <laughs> Mooney doesn't block anyone. Mercifully, Jesus. Third and fifteen, tie game. Oh, let's let's drop Justin Jones in the coverage. That fucking guy. My God, what are we like? Why is he anybody? If they're if you have the eleven guys on the field and you power rank them on who you shouldn't drop in the coverage, he's twelfth. It is <laughs> silly, silly to blitz on that play and have Justin Jones drop in coverage. It makes absolutely no sense. Hey, when it became then, seventeen, hold on. and then the field goal situation. Go the field goal situation at the end of the first half, if you know you, you need eight more yards, what the play calling there is just atrocious. Like, what are we doing? You know you need eight more yards, and you're just you're just lackadaisically? Lackadaisically? Lackadaisically. Some, one of those two. Black. You're lacking Lily Black up the middle, play. and it just is so half-ass. And then you can't kick a field goal. And then at the end of the, the – End of the game there. I mean, just darn all movie. Yeah, you can't rely on a, a Hail Mary, but the ball is legitimately in your belly button. It was it if there was a knife on the end of it, it would have stabbed you right in the fucking gut. And you you somehow kick it and it gets intercepted. Like that play, it, it is that, unbelievable. That play did get me to jump off the couch. Like when it fell oh. into his lap, I was like, Oh, it was like oh one of those. Kyle, you yeah, like I had Bears plus three and a half, so I guess that was that was a a positive good, takeaway. I knew, I knew they were going to lose by three. I knew they were going to lose by three. He has like, to I, feel I, better, I a little better now. More at money least. On it. I'm sorry, I'm ranting. What did you say? I said you have to feel at least a little better now after just unloading the clip on us right there. All right, well, I'm I'm gonna. That was negative, Kai. He's gone. Hi. How was your weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was, I will say too. I just to, just to add to your. You're to not going to let I answer how his weekend. No, was just either. I need <laughs> to add to your eruption before I forget. When it was 17 to 10, I think when they kicked that field goal, I said out loud, "I was like, this is the textbook kind of game that the Bears are just going to blow. Like they're going to figure out how to blow this." Yeah, and then on that long touchdown pass, what are we? How does he one? How does he not get pushed out of bounds? How does nobody get a hand on him? How does that know. ball not get deflected? Like what the fuck? Credit to Flacco. That was a great throw. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, good. All right. You're going to go to tight. We can go to Ty's uh, weekend now. Weekend. My weekend was fine, and that's Ty's weekend, dude. I'm I'm more interested in the fucking the gripes out of the two of you, dude. And that's Ty's weekend. And that's Ty's weekend. And that was Ty's weekend. I watched this. I watched the yeah. Bears game, dude. That's Ty's weekend. I mean, I was secretively happy that they lost. Not gonna lie. I mean, no, you weren't. Th- Shut up. Not- You're such a loser. I knew you were gonna say that. I knew you were not- gonna come in here with that fucking bullshit. Not you, going into the no game. Way you're happy about that. How could no? How could you be going, happy about that? Going how into could the you game. Be happy about that. And when they were winning at halftime and into the fourth quarter, I was like, "All right, let's let's win this game. Let's try and make the playoffs by some absurdly low percentage, but let's just keep 
racking up wins. They're going to be favored in the next probably three games to close out the season. I was, mm-hmm. I, was, I was ready. I wanted them to win again. But after realizing that Fields had a 50% completion percentage, uh, seeing a textbook collapse from the coaching staff in the fourth quarter again, like I'm ready to move on from from what they have under I'm center. I'm ready to move on from life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honest, for the first time, for the first time in the Justin Fields era, I'm not like a hundred percent. Like even going into this game, I was like, yeah, like this is stupid to think Justin Fields isn't the guy. Yeah. Even I, and I'm uh, a cynical lunatic. Right. You I are. have no right. Nobody should listen to me when it comes to this shit. Like I have no idea. What I'm, <laughs> nobody really knows what they're talking about, but like, I don't, I'm the biggest. No, but you're ever. still tweeting ways for the bears to make the playoffs at eight, nine. I have that pulled up. I have that pulled up here, so we can we can get in that. We, it depends. It, this is a choose your own adventure. Do you want negative or positive, Kai? You choose. We're, we're going to get all of it, probably, whether we like it or right not. Here. Something tells well, yeah, the worst negative getting, Kai is a little more entertaining. What's even worse is the Panthers win too. Negative Kai. This is from Kevin Lapka. I don't know if, if the, the math is right on this. I don't even know how you calculate this. So shout out him. The three, the Bears would lose. Three of these games. So the, these are the probabilities when the Bears would lose when they had their biggest leads in the three games they blew, according to ESPN Analytics. So against the Broncos, Lions, and Browns, they've blown three 10 point leads, which I'm sure is the most, most in football. I was going to say baseball, most in football this season. And probably like the most, who blows three 10 point leads in a single season and keeps their job? Like no one. I don't even know what the equivalent in, to that would be like in baseball. That would be like blowing like 10. Like three run leads, right? In the nine. Well, you saw how long it took for Brandon Staley to get fired. Yeah, well, he made the playoffs last year. He didn't blow it. Would you rather be the Bears or the Chargers? Bears. Uh, the Bears have a better defense, but the Chargers at least seemingly have their quarterback figured out. Yeah, yeah but they don't have a coach. Oh, I guess we don't really. Fuck. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, all right, so 1.9% versus the Broncos, 1.8% versus the Lions, and 8.7%. That was their chance that they would lose. So the statistical probability that they would lose all three of those games is 0.003%. What the fuck? How is that yeah. possible? How is know. that even remote? The Cubs either sign like Shohei or get, trade for Shohei, sign Bell. They need to do some just some crazy shit today just to get me. You just said back trade on my for rocket. Shohei. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't mean Shohei at all, but I needed to make the, how they would get at the, Shohei the correct. You wanted to get absolutely. <laughs> you wanted to get so crazy that it made no sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that's not even possible. All right, negative or positive I don't know. Kind? You're right. You're right. Those are three games that are just like. I mean, what's 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 the worst part about it is this Browns loss was probably the most mild of the three. All equally as frustrating, but the Lions and Brown or uh, Broncos games were like just like if the Broncos total, game happened, total collapses. If you flipped the Broncos and Bears game in the schedule, that he might get yeah he might get he might get fired. He might have gotten fired today on the tarmac. Yeah. I think what makes what the Browns say, worse, the Browns loss worse, is that Joe Flacco literally came in off the fucking streets and off his couch. 200 plus yards in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that he was. Did, he did that last week, too, though, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Super Joe Bowl Flacco winner. Is, uh... People forget that. Yeah, Joe Flacco know. is nothing short of impressive. Yeah, he needs to like, trim his neck beard, though. It kind of was just pissing me <laughs> off all game. Yeah, he his does. Beard connects to his his chest hair. It's um, cold in right. Cleveland this time of year. We have four tweets, five. I mean, five tweets just, left here. I, what do you want? A I negative wanna, or positive? I just want to echo to you what I've been saying. It's fucking echo. time. It's time. It's time to move on. Finish the season out. That's fine. But fire the coach, fire the offensive coordinator, and bring in a new quarterback. Whatever that means for Fields, trade whatever you got to do. Maybe my subconscious is still in on field because of all these stats I have pulled up. Nothing is about Justin Field. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be. It couldn't possibly be his fault. All right. This is from 
this is from me actually. So <laughs> since 2015, teams with three sacks, three interceptions, and a pick six were 40 and 0. They are now 40 and 1. How the fuck do you lose that? Statistical improbability, right? Where's the other one? Hold on. This is the last negative one I'll give you. I texted it to you. So since Eberflus, so the last two years, the Bears lead the NFL in games in which they've picked off the opposing team three plus times. There's been 50 games over the last two years where a quarterback has thrown three interceptions. Teams in those games are 46 and four. Somehow the Bears are only three and two. They have two of the four losses. <laughs> what? Like what? They they make. I mean, yeah. I'm cherry picking you should, these insults. Can, can you like, email you email these to uh, George McCaskey? He responds to emails. <laughs> does he actually? How do you know? Yeah, that? he does. <laughs> Why do you know? What's that? his email? I don't know. I'll find it. <laughs> if you find Ty, I'll send you these. Can you email him? From, I don't have access to our email anymore. <laughs> George at Bears dot com, dude. Go ahead. <laughs> George.McCaskey at bears.com. <laughs> um, all right. Do we want a positive one? They say he responds to every email he receives. There's just simply so no please, way. Please email him these stats and uh, call for Matt, Eber- Matt Eberflus's job. You're about to say Matt Nagy. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. No. This is a positive, positive defensive one. Okay. Oh, fuck. I accidentally got rid of the path to the playoffs one. All right, so the Bears, pretty much the Bears since acquiring Montez Sweat. Oh, God, they're showing this replay on the TV right now. I can't even watch the Bears. Um, The Bears before acquiring Montez Sweat were 22nd in takeaways and 27th in points per game allowed. Since acquiring them, they're first in takeaways and 7th in points per game allowed. So that's good, right? I guess. Way to show some excitement there. All right. This is here. This is the path to the playoffs. Are you ready? Please. Yeah. I'm intrigued. We need the Eagles Please. to beat the Seahawks tonight. Minus four. We talked about this beforehand. That's a lock. So now if we're looking at next week, Bears beat the That's Cardinals. Which... Shut up. Bears beat the Cardinals. Which in their four four and a half point favorites, Rams beat the Saints in their four point favorites, and the Lions need to beat the Vikings, and the Lions are three, three point, point favorites. favorites. <clears throat> so that's, ooh, that's a sketchy line. You're telling me there's a chance. I thought the Lions would have been like six point favorites. That scares me. So say that again. Bears need to win. So the Bears need to win out. Right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Just we'll take that out of the yeah. Take that out of the <laughs> must <equation>. win. <laughs> That's gonna be the toughest though. Eagles beat the Seahawks, <laughs> Rams beat the Saints, Lions beat the Vikings over the next week plus. Then the following week, we need your Steelers to beat the Seahawks. That's where you lose it, dude. That's where it's game over. And that's on we us. We need the Vikings <laughs> to beat the Packers and the Giants to beat the Rams. None of that'll happen. And then a week eight, the Giants to beat the Rams. <laughs> she Tommy did veto to ball out one more time, dude. But the, the good part about that is, and I've looked, the Giants are they're at home in, in that game. They're so the Rams are going to MetLife, which you never know. I got to imagine that doesn't matter. I mean, after much. after the Tommy DeVito special last Monday, you really you really don't know. Exactly. There you go. See, now you're cooking. And then finally, in week 18, we need the Lions to beat the Vikings, where it looks like the Lions will have the NFC North wrapped up and have absolutely nothing to play for. And then the 49ers to beat the Rams, which the, they could be playing for the one seed, so that could be a possibility. A lot of long And the shots. hardest part about all this is the Bears need to beat the Cardinals, Falcons, and Packers. That's doable. You're right. I think that's the most doable part. No, it's not. I, well, I, mean, I think if the Titans beat the Seahawks, I don't know. There's some way to – there's probably another way to do it, but this is just the way I did it, <laughs> and it worked. So that's what we're going to go with. Thank you for sitting through that. Max, your thoughts. <laughs> My thoughts are you just named 
eight to ten different teams. Matchups from week seventeen <laughs> that are going to be completely irrelevant, possibly within five hours, because the Seahawks could very well beat the Eagles in this game. Kyle's buzzing, dude. He's just buzzing. No, there's no way. You're such a prick. I just bet the the Eagles. <laughs> and you're yeah, saying okay, that's fine. It's not like I'm sitting here saying that the Eagles are definitely going to win. I'm saying they're going to lose. So you're better off. <laughs> All right. So if well, no, the Eagles need to win because I'm I'm on the playoff predictor now. If the Eagles lose, they're the fifth seed instead of the second seed. That's crazy. Actually, just think about after they started ten and one. Um. All right, here's a yeah, here's a question for you. What in what scenario do the Bears keep Justin Fields and or Matt Eberflus next year? I don't think. Do you think can. how possible? What's the what's what's the percent probability of either one or both of them being back? Point oh oh three. <laughs> okay, so you agree that they're both gone. Yeah, I mean, that was the probability of the Bears losing all three of those games. <laughs> I don't know. I would put it at. I'll tell you what. What would you, what would you say the over under is like under five percent that they're both back? If the Bears that don't want them, the Steelers. How do you run it back? Steelers will take you? them. Well, yeah, dude. You guys have no one. We can ruin them over there just as fine. What do you think I mean, Fields you guys... in a trade? Like a fourth round I pick? Think... No. More than that, way more than that. Sam Darnold yeah. got a second, fourth, and sixth, and Sam Darnold is a backup. Justin Fields. And how many starting. years are left on Fields' deal? Two, two, one. Yeah, I don't know how that works. If the if the new team could pick up his fifth year option, or I think they could probably trade him to like the Falcons for like a second round pick. You trade him to an AFC team for sure. There's no way you're trading him to the Falcons where you like might have to play them. I mean, it's you're taking the best deal, in my opinion. Yeah, but better wins. Gonna... I don't even know. Yeah, I guess. I would. I would prefer an AFC. It's not like you're trading though. him in the division. If they traded him to the Vikings, that would be pretty crazy. Now we're cooking, and then he just fucking. I mean, cooks the Bears. The Lions traded Hawkinson years. to the Vikings. Yeah, but it's a tight end. It's not a quarterback. I know, but still. There is, I think I saw it's a 94% chance that the Bears have a top two pick. Let's look at the playoff. All right, so the Panthers play the Packers. Panthers play the Packers, the Jaguars. And where are you, Daryl? Slut you. Box. Wait, the, the Bears have will... a top two. Sorry, what was the percent of that? 94% that the And it's box... all... Almost all of it's coming from Carolina's pick. Yeah. Like there's oh, yeah. no chance. Well, I, yeah, it's a bear slide enough. Yeah. No, it's all from Carolina's pick. The only hope that like is the the Pats beat the Jets in week eighteen. Because they always beat the Jets. And then they move up one. I don't even know what the who the poo poo teams are. I guess the Cardinals, but yeah, there's a ninety four percent chance. How crazy would it be if the Bears got the second pick? Like the second and fifth pick. Crazy. No, I was saying my second and third pick theory, that's out the window. I want the first pick now. <laughs> I'm evolving. Yeah. You need the first pick. I, I want the first pick, but I also want the playoffs. So, like, I'm going to. Look at all that they netted pick. with that first pick from last year. Would you rather get the first pick or make the playoffs this year? First pick. First pick. Both. First fucking pick. Both. Of course, first pick, dude. I what do you want? Was, like, what, what, can you imagine if you were able to f- just have police someone with that first pick and get a quarterback still? Like, what if you were able to move to four? Like, move back a couple? Like, move to four so you don't get those top two quarterbacks, but you get Jaden Daniels. Phoenix or, or whatever the fuck. And that, but you get like it. three other first round picks in upcoming drafts. That yeah. I would do. Yeah. That I 100% would do. You need to load up on capital. But I got to say. Yeah, you do. You need, a, credit. you need to beef up that offensive line. Lucas Patrick is a turnstile. Nate Davis I give is a turnstile. To, if you want to talk about positives, okay. 
Their defense looks awesome. Like in the Montez Sweat trade and sign and trade is like it couldn't be working out much better than it is right now. Yeah, I, I don't want uh Poles gone. I think Poles no. is building this roster the right way. Yeah. I want Can you imagine here? Here's here's the scenario I was talking about. Imagine if the Bears somehow trade a Fields package to the Raiders for Max Crosby. You saw you're I know what tweet you're talking about. Well, and what, then what you was have the exact package that it said. I don't know. And then you have Crosby and Sweat opposite of each other terrorizing opposing teams' quarterbacks. I don't mind that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's the formula to success on defense in the NFL. Yeah, but I think there's so many holes yeah, to fill off. Get to the first. quarterback. Yeah, but there if are. You're, I, there are, but no, I agree with I agree with you here, Max. You need to get to the quarterback. You absolutely need to get to the quarterback. Their defensive backfield is rounding out. You got to like some of their linebacker play too, like, and then address offense in the drafts with all these picks they're going to have. So you would trade that pick to the Raiders, get their first this year, their first next year, and Max Crosby? Well, I'm saying I would trade Fields and something else to the Raiders for Crosby. Ooh, you're saying trade Fields? Yeah. I don't think they'd do that. There's no, no. way they do that. No, I'm not saying it would be trade, a, would you I'm not saying it would be a one for one. The, how about if you traded the first overall pick to the Raiders for Max Crosby, their first this year and their first – Next year. Well, where, where are they going to be in the draft? The Raiders. They're pretty bad. They meet, they're six and eight. So they're not going to be okay. only like a mid pick. So you, but you like still have, that, you have your pick. You have your pick. Where you could get Jaden Daniels or Marvin Harrison. Yeah. You mean I the mean, Carolina pick? Yeah. You're, well, no, that'd be the one you trade to the Raiders is for Max. Oh, Rogers, I see, I see my, what you're saying. In my scenario. Okay. You think Max Crosby is worth that much, huh? Well, if you're if you're getting him, their first round pick this year, their first round pick next year, and maybe even like the following year, you're just loading up. Like you, yeah. you're fleecing the Raiders. Yeah, they don't have a. I don't even know who their GM is. They probably fired him. I think they fired him when they fired Josh McDaniel. You, you're. I mean, Mark Davis is just ripe for the picking to fleece. Tell me he's not. Yes. He's in Vegas. They want to put 20. on a show. Yeah, they want the flashy new quarterback, number one overall. Caleb Williams is perfect for that. Yeah, perfect. Take him. Give us everything. Give us everything that's valuable to you besides your haircut. And we'll please you. <laughs> like it's it's so I never even thought of it until right now. That's so obvious the choice to do. <laughs> and then take Jaden Daniels, and you could trade Fields somewhere else, and and get another offensive lineman. I love oh. how I love how into this you are. You know, he signed the exact I, same I deal that Sweat did with the Bears. Four years, $98 million. Yeah. Yep. When, it, when does his contract kick in? It started last offseason. So it's so, three years. It's a big investment up front, but I think, I mean, they would have the two, basically two of the best defensive linemen in the NFL. Uh, yeah, but it's so much cap space. Psalms. Biting his tongue. He just wants to yell TJ Watt into the microphone. Yeah, I mean, grow up, dude. No, I'm Wah. saying I'm saying those two together is better than Watt and whatever else the Steelers have on the other side. Alex Heisman's pretty good. Who? Alex Heisman. <laughs> All right. So put a put a pin in that one. We're gonna come back to that. We have predicted uh other scenarios in the first in in previous podcasts, just like DJ Moore getting traded to the Bears. It's true, we did. We did well. So, not we. You guys. We did do that one into existence. Yep. I'm on the playoff predictor again right now, trying to figure out how the Bears are. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle turned checked out off, of this podcast bro. two twenty minutes ago, and he's just been turn that playoffs. turn that noise off. How about some on those days it. for the boys, dude? I can't help it. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. True life. I'm, I'm addicted, addicted to dude. predicting the playoffs. On this day's – oh, man, I don't even know. All right. Let's see. What do we got here? I'm loading them. I forgot to load these. I had everything else loaded. <laughs> uh, December 10th, 
you had I had every insult set known to man loaded. <laughs> None of what we actually needed. Uh, December 20th, 2010. Uh, Corey Wooten sacks Brett Favre on what would be his last snap of his career as the Bears clinched the NFC North. Uh, this is a this is a fun little memory for me because every time I watch this game, I'm just reminded of how fucking crazy it is that Brett Favre played with the Vikings. Yeah. I feel like 2010 season, I mean, he was there for two seasons, but especially that 2010 season when he was just ass is crazy. Wow. And watching this highlight, he, he literally just – whips him down and just shoves his face into the crowd. <laughs> I think it's even crazier he played for the fucking Jets. That that I mean I have a Brett Favre Jets jersey, so yeah. <laughs> right. That that one hits home. <laughs> um it's actually crazy that he did and then Rogers now went to the Jets. But anyways. Jordan Love now Rogers is gonna go to Vikings. No. Ooh, definitely Wouldn't better. Him, though. Definitely better potential to make a run for a Super Bowl. I just think yeah. he changes any team. Like, I, like, even though their offensive line is trash, like I think he could come back and still compete on that team. Would you trade the first overall pick to the Jets for Aaron Rodgers and like their next two first round picks? Absolutely not. Coming off You're of an Achilles a tear. No, you're such a bitch. I would do He's that. Just four years year. old. I would do it in a four heartbeat. Years old. That was a fetish for fucking yeah old Hall of Fame quarterbacks. <laughs> Sue me and toes yeah. and feet. <laughs> Sue me. Old quarterbacks he, and feet. Peyton, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. Broncos. Fifty percent completion percentage. <laughs> no, no. I've been telling you, screaming from the mountaintops, that I want him to be gone. I would rather have loved and lost than to not have loved at all. You would have rather just to not love at all. He loved lost. Peyton Manning when he's on the Broncos. He loved Brett Favre on the Jets, and now he wants the Bears to trade a, their first overall pick for Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying one for one. When you frame it like that, it's asinine. I'm saying for Aaron Rodgers and two first rounders. Yeah, no. You're t- that would be a steal. That would be an absolute <laughs> steal if you did that. I disagree. Hey, why don't you just see I what disagree. Joe Flacco's up to after this year? No. Not a bad call. I think you're crazy to think that you wouldn't do that. I'm gonna I bet you Gail would say yeah. I mean it it's starting to make a little more sense, but still no. Plus, he's not coming here. Well, I'm not this is yeah, we're we're talking about something that is there's less than zero percent <laughs> chance of happening. Yeah. So. We're arguing into the abyss. Even though no I would reason. take I would take him as our daddy, as our rightful father, under center. Oh, six days a week and twice on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. Let's play too, dude. <laughs> I've got how a is, decent idea. How This is so depressing that I'm going to say this all out. I was thinking, <laughs> I was on a, a nice little walk with my dogs earlier, and I was thinking how I would just, I'm, I would love to be in an opportunity to get heartbroken again by the Packers in week 18. Like, that would mean the Bears are somehow in a spot to get into the playoffs. It would be they nice to have the opportunity, the not knowing what's going to happen. You have a sick, yeah. twisted mind, dude. I would love that opportunity. This is, so, um, I don't know if you realize, this is how our brains have been developed. We're we're, thir- we're almost 30 years old here. These are, these are fully developed Chicago Bears brains. It's a damn shame, too, dude. Oh, man. That's weird to think our brains are fully developed. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't say that and I don't think the experts would either, frankly. But the difference between fully developed and full capacity is pretty drastic in this case. I, yeah, I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say for me. Good. But I agree. I'd hate to have to edit this fucking thing later. <laughs> you know what yeah, else is depressing? Okay. Shohei Otani signing with the Dodgers. We have two more on this taste. Don't change this taste. Follow the script. We have so many. Oh, but I have yeah, so many sucks. tabs open right now. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> you want to talk Cubs? The Cubs <laughs> suck. Yes. Give me they the honest do days, brother. They, right, the I think they stage. signed a free agent today for. Yeah, that's a fake say? name. Tom Tom Pan- Pannon. Hey, for what Pannon. it's worth, 30 minutes into this podcast is how long it took you guys to switch switch up to Cubs talk, and that's much better than normally. So That is a new record, my friend. Golf claps all around for you guys. 
All right, December 25th, 2011, down one in the final minute. Lou Aldang steals Kobe's pass, setting up Derrick Rose for the game winner. Uh, I don't. I think we've talked about this last year. One, I think playing on Christmas Day, basketball on Christmas Day, like if you're in the 2.30 spot and the – or would that be? Yeah, the 2.30 and then like the 5 o'clock slot, those are the primetime games. Those are the best. Uh, but just the Bulls jerseys, their red jerseys, and the white Lakers jerseys at Staples Center, oh, porn. I looked at this. I was like, oh, this is a great clip. F- they didn't even remember what the clip was. And I was just like, this is this is just it. This is the best. On Christmas you feel Day. Any, anything remotely close to that, Max. You're just nodding, looking at your phone like, all right, what's next? He's just so ready to talk Cubs. It's stupid. But I'm with you. No, I'm just letting you. I'm letting you go. You're doing great. No, you're not. <laughs> All right, last one. This is this is a fun little segment, though. December 2011. Or, yeah, December 27th, 2011. Mitch Trubisky tweets, "I love to kiss titties." Who doesn't? So I wanted to ask you: Do you have a favorite? As old athlete tweet of all time that just comes to mind, or do you want me to just start reading a bunch of them? Um, no, keep going. You can read them. All right. So this. I is mean, some, the uh, this, what's what's this? <laughs> this one's pretty dirty. But what about the Ray Allen one? Yeah. The uh, <laughs> think about my dick switching from your clit to your tongue. Yeah. And I want your tongue switching off between my dick and my tongue, or something. Yes. <laughs> something really. That, but that, yeah, that was that just nails it verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> Knows exactly. He's like, what he's like, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> or, it's a direct quote, or something like that. I don't know. I, that's I'd ad lib. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Look it up. tight. read it. I, I'm gonna see how close I was actually. Straight out of a Fifty Shades of Grey book. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, le- Fifty Shades of Ray. There you go. You're you're dialed. Um, Larry Nance Jr. tweeted. May 1st, 2012. Gee, I sure hope Kobe can keep his hands to himself in Denver this time. Oh. Dot, dot, dot. Oh. That's a, that's a tough one. That's tough. Um, Colin Kaepernick in 2010 said, are you really allowed to pull out your booby to breastfeed on an airplane? Wow, I can't believe <laughs> I just saw that. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Hey Kyle, I hate to say it, dude, but you fucking you pretty much nailed you nailed this thing <laughs> verbatim, verbatim. Can't believe verbatim. I just saw you. He said, "I'm getting there when you masturbate. Think about my tongue or your clit and switching back and forth from my dick to my tongue, which honestly doesn't make sense." And that you lost. How, me. I mean, how 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 do you accidentally like go to Twitter instead of texting? Like that's just I don't know. <laughs> If I had a dollar for it's every like, time uh, I posted a dicky on the internet instead of texting it to one of the boys, uh, I'd be rich. You have at least two dollars <laughs> today. <laughs> the the guy who hosts the CBS game day show, I think his name's James Brown. He tweeted out like a Pornhub link. It was like little white bitch likes big black or something like that. Or or there's the like the guys that go and like like porn on Twitter, and then you go to their recent likes, and it's just like some. I think Samuel L. Jackson did that or something. Some hentai bullshit. Yeah, LeBron too. like like wet butts, like big wet butts during the when he was during the. I got the a big bubble. wet butt over here. It was not during Zero Dark Thirty, apparently. No, that's what it was supposed to be. Really? It was supposed to be during Zero Dark Thirty? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy, right? Big old yeah. wet butts, dude. This is a fun one, Cardale Jones. Why should we have to go to class if we came here to play football? We ain't come to play school. Yeah, I Classes love that one. Pointless. That's a great one. Love that one. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I th- I always thought uh oh that not that it's a tweet, but Giannis on his Instagram story one time literally had a blowjob bell and he was just ring- it's literally said ring for a blowjob and he was just ringing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's just good clean fun. I mean, yeah, it is. It was pretty funny, but. That's all I got, Max. The best part, I, I'm trying to think of other celebrity tweets. Like the Ja Rule one is one that gets circulated all the time. I, too, was hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray. Um, one of my all-time favorites is Trump talking. He's always He says something like, happy thank, or Merry Christmas or Happy Thanksgiving, even to the haters and losers. 
Just yeah. any, any yeah. Trump tweet ever. <laughs> yeah. That one actually is pretty funny. <clears throat> um. All right. What else we got? Cubs. There's not. There's literally yeah. nothing to talk about for the Cubs. It's just a desolate they, wasteland. They like when? What are they gonna do? Desolate. It is desolate. That's a great. And the word. Dodgers are the modern day Yankees. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's not true. even fair. The the whole I, I, no salary cap in baseball. Thing. I'm starting to think that the Cubs sign Craig Council just so that they can become the Brewers. You know. That's that's mean. I sent, I sent this text earlier this week. I was like tired. Cubs sign Craig Council. Uh, expected to be very active in the free agent and trade markets this year. Uh, wired. Cubs sign Craig Council. Trying to emulate the Brewers model. Will not be active at all in the free agent or trade markets this year. Yeah, that's fucking rude. <laughs> They'll I mean, sign someone eventually. Yeah? You think so? Okay. Oh, oh. I feel like they're going to keep Ballinger. I feel like they're going to keep Ballinger. Shock if they didn't. They, I mean, you, I don't know. Honestly, I don't the only know. team, the I'm only team that could, the only team that could swoop in and steal a Ballinger is the Blue Jays. Apparently, he wants to live in Toronto. Free health care is a nice little. Perk. Yeah, but he has free health care. Just living, being, you know, in the bigs. I think he's just chasing the paper. I mean, yeah, wouldn't you? I don't know. I think I think I don't know. Is Matt Chapman a real option still? Can they I trade for Bichette? Want, I don't even want Matt Chapman. Mets aren't moving Alonzo. They need a pitcher. Like they're running out of options, though. Tommy Panone, Panioni, whoever the I fuck don't even that know guy who that is. is. I don't know either. I bet Tommy Gross. DeVito's agent represents him too. How awesome was that? That he was wearing. He looked like. Uh, I saw somebody said he looks like the Fighting Irish logo. Tommy DeVito's agent with that green suit he had on yesterday. Yeah, did he you did. Not? Wow, no, no reaction out of you there. No, I saw it. You were just, you were there as you just looking at your phone and not even listening. These past to two episodes, Kyle's, Kyle's like, "What the fuck? You're not doing jumping jacks after I said that." <laughs> oh, you don't absolutely love is, my fucking banter. The best part is he wanted me to get all hype about Otani on the last what two or three episodes ago and uh I wasn't showing enough excitement why because now he's on the fucking Dodgers for 10 years here's this is such the fake news media right now <laughs> fake Go back. news wrong totally wrong I can't even you know that what was get- hilarious though didn't he get inducted into the Italian American Hall of Fame or something yeah, wasn't he he that's yeah you yeah, know what might get Max's juices awesome. flowing dude it's what's funny about that is I f- saw that guy for the first time on like a Twitter meme a, less than a week ago, and next thing you know, he's getting inducted into the Italian American Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> like, isn't that how that happened? I, I can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly can't say no, so I don't know. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say yeah. That's pretty pretty exactly how it happened. Pretty loose uh, committee. Loose guidelines over there at the Italian American Hall of Fame. I'll show you something fucking they just let, loose. They just let anyone in. Uh, what um, Mike at Max's juice yep. is flowing is reminding him that he's in first place in gambling bets. Boom. Oh, damn it. I, I don't think I had either. a good week this week, though. <laughs> this week? You mean like three weeks ago, the last time we recorded a podcast? That week, yes. Um, yeah, wow. Well, holy shit. I don't even know. I'll, have, I'll go through these numbers after yeah. i don't even know what week this is from that's fine let's just say some new ones dude some new numbies all right do you have your picks i do yes. I know max doesn't picks in preview no i'm ready picks in preview who's in am i in last probably yeah you're in last you're going first you're all in right. dead last yeah dead to rights brother uh my favorite. I'm going Lions minus three against the Vikings. That one, nice. That's, that's sketchy. I don't know. With it. Sharp oh, picks. Yeah, I'm a sharp. It doesn't make any sense, but yeah, I guess. What day of the week is that game on? Sunday. That's a Sunday noon. Damn, the Bears are at 325. What the fuck? On Christmas Eve? Yeah. 
Hey, why are you mad that's, about that? That's gross. Guess so. I'm going to the game on New Year's Eve, by the way. Are you? Mm-hmm. That's fun. You can get fucked up. Probably. All right, Kai, what do you got? Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Rams minus four. Vegas still loves the Eagles. Like next week, they're already ten and a half point favorites against the Giants. Um, why would they? Damn, why would they not love the Eagles? Because they just got walloped two weeks in a row. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, but not tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Max, you said you had your picks, huh? Yeah, Kyle stole mine, so I don't really want to. All right, I'll go. I'm gonna go Bears minus four and a half. Okay, then I'll take the Rams. You had them. You said they were minus four. Yeah, I'm gonna take the Bears minus four and not four and a half. I'm gonna buy that half point for being a nice guy. Who said you could do that? The Rams. I gave you the Rams. Fine, 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 fine. All right, I'm going Browns plus two and a half against Houston. Yeah, that's a fishy line. And that's I'm all assuming Stroud will be back, but still fishy. Fishy, fishy in a brook. <laughs> um, I am going to go Panthers plus four and a half against the Packers at home. That's also one that makes that feel like that should be a seven point spread. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's really hard to bet against the Niners right now. I'm scared of them. They've won, I think, five or six games in a row by 12 points in each game. Yeah. Good thing one of them, I had a minus 13. Ooh. I know you remember that one. I do. Fuck. <laughs> we, don't talk about, we don't talk about that one. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going Bengals plus two and a half against the Steelers. Jake Browning is the truth. The Bengals are two and a half point favorites. Okay. <laughs> this guy's just. I, I'm thinking you're not going to let me buy five points. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> all right. Fine. I'll go. Ty, you're I'll over. Go. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'll take the Ravens plus five and a half on Christmas night. All right. Well, my over is Chiefs Raiders over 41 and a half, and that's just all there is to that. That's all I know about that. Cowboys Dolphins over 51. Ooh, that's a lot of points for a team that just put up 10 this week. I know. (laughs) I can't wait. I'm going Bucks, Bucks Jags over 43 and a half. Ew. Ew. Gross. All right, well, it's a weird game. You guys are gonna love this one. Fans of Chicago sports are gonna like this one particularly. Uh, Bears Cardinals under forty four. Yeah, that, that's one that's gonna get rave reviews. <laughs> Can't wait. Oh shit! I just realized I took. I have two overs. I didn't even look at an under. Um, <laughs> you're a big boy. I'm sure you could figure it out quick. Max, what's your under? Broncos, Patriots under 34 and a half. Wow. Taking the lowest under on the board, huh? Highest over and lowest under. Clockwork. You're a madman. You have to do these things sometimes. <laughs> um. <laughs> Every week, Max goes, yeah, I got picks. <laughs> I'm going... I'm going Colts, Falcons, under 44 and a half. Oh, I was eyeing that one, too. Beauty. All right. See? Quick draw McGraw over here. I got a uh, couple sporkles to choose from if you're so interested. We are. Man. We could do 09 to 2010 Blackhawks roster. That just, that just sounds like it might be fun for Kyle to do in two seconds. Uh, I can do, do let's do that, do that one right now. <laughs> do that one right now. All right, all right, all right. I figured you might. Right now. Right now, dude. Right now. 
I'm trying to figure out a way for the Bears to make the playoffs with the Saints winning on Thursday. All right. You got and 24 answers, two minutes. Chicago Hawks, 2009-2010 roster. Are you ready? Two minutes? I bet you. Geno Smith oh. is playing tonight, Kyle. FYI. Yeah, I saw. Doesn't make a difference. I bet you, you do this in 45 seconds or less. Go ahead. Three, two, oh, one. Hold on. Let me go first. Let me try. Oh, it's two minutes. Go ahead, Kyle. Sharp. Brower. B-R-O-U-W-E-R. You're going to do it in order? Yeah. Versteeg. Lad. L-A-D-D. Eager. Bickle. Taze. Uh, Boland. I honestly have no idea. Skilly, maybe? I don't know who number 11 is, to be honest. Skilly with an E. S-K-I-L-L-E. Okay. Keep moving. Frazier. E-R. S-E-R. Carcillo Hosa. wasn't number 11, right? Wasn't he 12? He wa- Hosa. He was 13. Kane. Burrish. Keith. Keith. Jalmerson. You're going to have to spell Burrish. B-U-R-I-S-H. Keith. Good luck spelling Jalmerson. It's yeah. H-J. A-L-M-A-M-A-R-S-S-O-N. <laughs> Hendry. Keith. 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 Boyton. B-O-Y-T-O-N. B O Y N T O N. Um, wa- no Walker. I can't even seconds. see the position. Seabrook. Left defense is number eight. Thirty-three is that Bufflin? Yeah, by by Fuglian. Fu- by Fuglian. B Y B Y F U G L I E N. L I E N. Campbell, Sopel. Niemi, Hue. Two minutes is not long enough not much because Song can't. You spell. got Niemi and Hue. This John, oh, Madden. John Madden. The football. I forgot about him. Oh, and who the hell okay, was going to guess Kim Johnson too? Kim Johnson doesn't count. He played one game with the Hawks. He was nowhere near the playoff roster. He played legitimately one game in his Hawks career. All right, you got one more for us, partner? Yeah, I do, partner. Uh, Chicago Bears top ten one that single I could season play. leaders. One that I could play. Top ten Bears single season leaders or bear starting quarterback since nineteen eighty. Of which there are thirty four. Bears starting quarterback since nineteen eighty. All right. That one feels relevant. Sure it does. Just so you know, Kim Johnson played eight regular season games with the Hawks. No playoff games was murdered. All right, Chicago Bears starting quarterback since 1980. Even if they started just one game, you got six minutes. Ready, go. Henry Burris. Since 1980. Uh, I S B U R B U R R I S. McMahon. Fucking Henry Burris. Uh, Kramer. Harbaugh. H-A-R. There you go. Yeah, he's really. got it. Orton. Grossman. Or- Are you trying to do Orton? I thought you said or- Horton. Horton, here's a hoe. <laughs> Cutler. <laughs> McMahon. Isn't it crazy he, that Cutler was only that. there from 09 to 11? Um, Cordell Stewart. Stewart. Cade McNown. Fucking... All time Stewart, Jim Miller. by the way. Cordell Stewart. Jim Miller. Craig Krenzel. No, it's, you're thinking of Chris Kringle, dude. Chad Hutchinson. Chad Hutchinson. Uh, Jason Campbell. I think we already got him. No. He definitely started for them. Jason um, Campbell. P. Fields on there. P B E L. It's not on there. Oh, what year is this? Till 2010. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. 
I don't know. Look at that. No, it's fucked up. No. Yeah, what is the most? Yeah, 2010. Is Cutler the most recent guy on there? No. Yeah, 2010. Uh, Todd Collins. There you go. Caleb Haney. H-A-N-I-E. Josh McNown. Got that. You already got him? We got Cade McNown. Or Josh McCown. McCown. Uh, Brian Greasy. Sure. Nice. Doug Flutie. Really? Greased up deaf guy. <laughs> Sean Payton. <laughs> That's fucked up. I thought Sean Payton did. Kyle, Kyle, uh, even, Kyle didn't even flinch at that. No, that was great. <laughs> Why? What did you say? It's a greased up deaf guy. What was, the, Not what was that in him. relation to? <laughs> you like, said Brian Greasy. Oh, guy just ripped a bowl and he's not laughing at all. <laughs> this guy uh, makes a joke and wants me to go bonkers every time. Yeah, I do. Just like you with your reactions to your takes. Uh, oh, shit. Who would, be o- who would be 0-2 to 0-3 that started 13 games? Oh two to oh three. Ninety six to oh one. Jim Miller. We already got Jim Miller. Did you Miller. say Jim Miller? Who was before Jim Dave Miller? McNown. Right before Jim McNown. Craig Krenzel, Rex Grossman, Chad Hutchinson. Uh Jonathan Quinn. Yeah. He's Three stars in four. four. <laughs> Not bad though. Oh, uh he did say Cordell Stewart, right? Mm-hmm. So you're gonna bug me now. I'm just looking it up. Who was quarterback the year you were born? In 94? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Eric Kramer, maybe? I have no idea. You could give up. I don't know any any of these. 85 to 90? Who took over after McMahon? Was it Tom Zack? T-O-M-C-I. How do you spell Tom Zack? Yeah. Mike Tom Zack. He's with the Packers. I know that. Oh, Ninety-six so to oh. Do you get Todd Collins? 50. Yeah, we got that. Chris Chandler, Jimmy Clausen. Did I spell that right, Clausen? C L A U S. No, he was later. Um. Oh, shit, dude. There's just so many bad Bears quarterbacks. It's honestly kind of crazy. You want me to give up? Shane Matthews. Ooh. Holy fuck. I'm cheating now. I'm just looking up answers. <laughs> you could click give up. A lot of Steves, dude. What the Steve fuck's up with Fuller's that? Steve Fuller's a good one. Steve Fuller, Steve Walsh, Steve Stenstrom. Look at you all think these we're going to guess Peter Tom Willis? <laughs> what about Rusty Lisp? That's a fake name. Moses, Moses Moreno. Moreno. I hear he part of the UFC, dude. <laughs> Mike Phipps. <laughs> Let me see those fat Phipps, dude. There you go, Max. I laughed at your joke. <laughs> An hour later. <laughs> you were laughing at Rusty <laughs> Lips. I, I know. That was funny. <laughs> Who's that, Rusty Lips? I thought Tom would like that one. <laughs> rusty Lips, dude. It doesn't take you much to get Tom cracking up over there. You got Rusty Lips, dude. Best oh, one yet. Oh, best. he's got a case of the rusty lips, dude. 